Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're talking all about horsehair brushes. Now guys, this is the gentleman's journey, it's my journey and I'm taking you guys along with me. So one of the things that I've noticed that a lot of guys are asking questions about, some of the buzz is around horsehair brushes. Now guys, I have a few here that we're gonna talk about as well as covering some of the purposes and what options are out there. Now I think a gentleman ought to have one because it's the tool I use the most in my care routine. In fact, a boot like this, this is the Captain by Thursday Boot Company. It's in the rugged and resilient line. So with this leather, they only want you to brush it down and then clean it. They don't want you to condition it or anything like that. So if you grab your horsehair brush, you hit it a little bit, you can really go a long ways of improving the look of your boot just with a horsehair brush. So now guys, the leather, whether it's your chrome tan, your oil tan, your veg tan, it's packed in from the tannery with oils, with waxes and conditioners. Now when you hit it with the horsehair brush, that's gonna rough it up, that's gonna agitate it, and that's gonna get those oils and waxes moving. And so it's gonna bring them to the surface, and just with that, you can buff out your scratches, and you can improve the look and the condition and quality of your boot just with the horsehair brush. Now, if you've been following the gentleman's journey for some time, you'll know that I don't go through a cleaning routine without brushing them down first. That's because our boots, you know, it's closest to the ground. We're walking through mud, we're traipsing around. These guys have some mud on the outsole there. And this gets all the attention. So you wanna make sure and get all the dirt off there and make sure and get it as clean as possible before you start applying any cleaners or conditioners. Because what's gonna happen, whatever you're using, you might start working that rocks and dirt and stuff down into the leather and you wanna get that off first. So the horsehair brush is your first line of defense, that, and I like to use the horsehair brush on the backside as well. And so after I condition, I always like to just buff that up. That's gonna work in whether you're doing waxes or polishes or conditioners, that's gonna buff those in and make sure you're kind of spreading it around evenly. And so a horsehair brush is always essential to that. Now friends, kind of my journey with the horsehair brushes is, I think one of my first ones was this Kiwi. So this is something that a guy will do. He'll run out to Walmart and grab a brush right away. And this is a solid choice. I'm just gonna say it. So this is actually 100% horsehair. And for what it's worth, it's been a good little brush. It is kind of a travel size. And so it's gone with me sometimes. It fits in a nice little box and it gets the job done all day long. So there's a lot of hate on Kiwi and stuff like that. Uh, it says right on there, made in China. So take that for what you will but they also offer this dauber brush. Now I'm hoping that some of these other brands will start carrying them, but I use this in a lot of videos too, whether it's sometimes putting on different conditioners, a dauber brush works perfect for that, or I always use it for cleaning. So you'll see me doing that circular motion time and time again, and just cleaning the boots. And this thing works great around the stitches, around the welt, and around the eyelets and everything. It's just a great little brush. So this is probably the number two brush I would have you get. Probably my second brush was this one. This is called a professional and it's a big brush. I'll just show you. I think a guy was asking in the comments a while back about this. So this one here is eight inches. So it's a decent sized brush. It's big in my hands and it's, it's a really great brush. You can get great big strokes out of that. And it really has gotten the job done well for me. It was originally kind of a neutral color. I wish it stayed that way. I got it used, whoever had it before. Probably ran some red or burgundy uh, cream polish through there, or maybe a wax, and so it's forever dyed. That's something we're gonna get into here in a minute about what kind of brushes you should have. But this has always been a really good one for me. And again, this is a horsehair brush. This guy over here, this is that synthetic. It's a, it's a plastic kind of bristle. And the only thing I've ever done with this, I got it used is run mink oil through it. So I'll get my little jar out and I don't love messing with that stuff too much in the first place. So I just grab the brush and get some on there and I start going to town with the mink oil. And so that's, you know, probably something I could get rid of. I don't need in my collection, but that's what I've used that for. So this is for the new book and the suede. I haven't actually used that because I don't have any of those boots right now at this point, but when I bought a set of Thursdays, I did a video or something, they sent me out this little brush. 
And so to my favorite friends, right now it's the Cobbler's Choice brush. So we're gonna spend a lot of time in this video talking about this. And I think as we unpack some of the details of this brush, we'll just learn more about horsehair brushes in general. So guys, Cobbler's Choice, they actually sent me out this brush. I didn't have to buy it, but I'm under no obligation, no contract uh, to sing their praises. I just happen to really love the product. So on the gentleman's journey, we like to talk about products we can get behind, products that have value and companies that have character. And so guys, one of the cool things about this is it's kicking consumerism in the face. <laughs> you know, I hate buying a bunch of cheap stuff that's gonna fall apart and wear out and you're just constantly going back year after year buying stuff. I don't like consumerism one bit. And so I found Cobbler's Choice to be a upstanding company. And I think this brush is gonna last into the ages. Uh, I think this is something you could pass on to your grandkids in fact. And so the neat thing about this, they actually source the wood, they source the horse hair, and they've put a lot of research and development into where they get their products. And so it has a nice curve, just like some of the other handles, you know, it, it has that curvature. This fits my hand really well. I can grab onto it. I have huge hands. And of course, this kind of looks like probably what this does in other guys' hands. It probably looks about right for my hand, but this fits really well. It's a great size. It's kind of in between these other ones. And I've been using it for a while now, and I just feel like it does everything I want it to. So let's get into a little bit of the build quality and the characteristics behind this. You know, the average brush has pretty big holes where they drill out into the wood for the bristles, for the horse hair. And so what they do is they have a pretty decent sized hole in there, and then they put these tufts in there, and they, they usually have about 90 to 95 is the way I understand it. That's how many bristles they have on the brush. Well, Cobbler's Choice has 150, like 150, 160. And so they pack in a lot more tufts, a lot more bristles into each little socket. The sockets are closer together and you're gonna get a lot better brush. Now, you take a look at this one and you could see there's like 50 rows across there and like 20 across there. That's because they're packing the holes tighter and they're packing a lot more bristles into that space. Now something with these synthetics and the plastics, again, huge holes, spaced really far apart, but these guys don't shed. And so if you're new to boots, you're new to understanding uh, bristles and all the brushes and it's not shedding, you probably think that's a good thing. And you know what, at, at least you're not dealing with the hairs. But that's actually a common misconception. If, you're, if your brush is shedding, that, that's how you know you have a good brush. And so as it's shedding, it's losing a little bit of horse hair because it's natural. So you know it's natural horse hair. And it's actually because these aren't machined. This isn't something from a factory. This, is, this has been on a horse. And so they're different lengths. And these are gonna pull out probably for the first couple uses, probably maybe for the first six months or something. And then I'm told that's gonna stop. Uh, but that's how you actually know you have a good brush there. And with the amount that they're packing in there, there's no dramas. So just pick them up <laughs> off the ground, vacuum them up or whatever you gotta do. And now you can tell all your buddies that you actually have a good horse hair brush when it's losing the bristles. Now, how many brushes ought a guy have? Well, we gotta be careful. I always say if you get more brushes than your wife has makeup applicators, then you know you're in trouble. So guys, we need to keep it respectable. We're gentlemen. We got a reputation to uphold. Uh, we can't get too dramatic with this stuff, but I think a guy ought to have, well, that dauber, so that kind of doesn't count, but you ought to have a dauber, I suppose. Maybe even like a toothbrush. Uh, that way you can get around the welt and the stitches and stuff like that. They make a welt brush, so if you wanna go out and grab one of those, I, you know, that's two brushes right there. But then I think a guy, depending on your boot collection and how big it is, ought to have three different horsehair brushes. And that's because of the coloring. And so at this point, there's actually one in here too. So I have two of these and this guy, and that's probably gonna be what I'm keeping. I have some of this stuff around for video purposes and whatnot. I just don't need it anymore now that I have more brushes. So this one here, uh, this that I've had forever, I'll go ahead and keep that. And I'm actually gonna run this with my tan, kind of my brown polishes. With this one here, this is gonna be my neutral polishes. So nothing but neutral comes on here. 
And then my last one, that'll be the black. So if you have black polish, that's the biggest no-no. Imagine with neutral polish and then black, they just don't mix and match and you're gonna be tearing up your shoes. You know, this did, like I said, have some of that burgundy in there. And if maybe you're running burgundy nonstop, then maybe that's something to consider. I think the burgundy can run with the brown and that's kind of pushing it. The burgundy and the black, again, you can't combine those because I try putting black onto your burgundy boots and it's just gonna mess it. So that's another one of those colors where you may wanna have something specific to that. This is just giving you guys kind of a rule of thumb. I don't wanna create some kind of code or chart or system for you. Just giving you ideas and tips and tools so that you can make better decisions for your boot care routine. So just something to think about. Maybe three brushes might get you through it. You know, use your common sense, start to study your leathers and understand what you need. Uh, but that's a good rule of thumb is to go out and grab three. You know, the thing that Cobbler's Choice did is they made this brush, they did the research and development, and somehow or another, they brought it in really cheap. I think it's like 12 bucks or something. So at that price point, I don't see why a guy couldn't have three or four of those brushes and not break the bank. And so, you know, hats off to Cobbler's Choice for doing that and still keeping it reasonable. Again, I'm dropping a link down below. It helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's an affiliate link. So check that out if that's something that you might need. Maybe you only have one now. Maybe it's an older, maybe it's a Kiwi. Maybe you wanna run that just with your black stuff and then get one for the neutral. I don't know your situation, only you do. So guys, I really hope this has been helpful. I tried to cover a huge array of topics here around the horsehair brush. Again, one of the things you're looking for is the amount of tufts, how big these are spaced apart, and just how many are included. Uh, if you're losing bristles, that's a good thing, it's A-OK. -okay. And get yourself a little cleaning brush and I think you'll be set. Again, try not to make it too dramatic, but have a little fun with it. So guys, if you haven't already, consider subscribing, joining the gentleman's journey. We're putting out videos all the time. I can't wait to see where this channel's at, even in the next couple of months. I appreciate all you guys. You know, you're subscribing, commenting, hitting the like button, showing all kinds of love. And this thing really is going somewhere. So friends, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Until the next video, guys, God bless you. And hey, don't forget to give those boots some love from time to time.